the right hand of this system that oppresses us is the present day rap industry. But instead of boycotting it, we do the exact opposite. Um, and we endorse these motherfuckers because they have what it is that we want. Which is a ticket out of poverty. We want to get away from the black community so fucking bad that we don't give a fuck if all we get to do is visit the pop world. Just get me out this motherfucker. Whatever I got to do. Whatever the fuck I got to do, man. I am Ayo Canseco, fearless leader of Ayo Nation, and this is Are You Fucking Serious? As in, am. How the fuck did that shit? That shit be crazy. Um, as in, are you fucking serious? Today we're gonna talk about something that's extremely serious. If you haven't noticed, um, we are going through um, not only race wars, but we're going through sex wars at this point in time. Um, what you doing? What are you doing? Come here. Come here. Because you look like you're doing something you ain't got no business. Yeah, get up there. Uh, you no longer have to be a female to be a female. Um, if you feel like a girl one day, you can go and join. If you're a dude, 16 year old, you're in high school and you feel like a girl, or just fuck it, you want to win some awards, you have low self esteem, you can join the girls' volleyball team. The girls' basketball team, the girls' track team, any fucking thing that you want to do because it's happened already. If you don't believe me, type it in. Just go to it. Even in college, I believe you can do this. I, do you know how fuck? Do you know how this can fuck up everything? Like, you can now get a scholarship. Girls get scholarships out of fucking high school. You know what I'm saying? To college. Like, you like, know what I'm saying? Like, if you're good at basketball, you can get drafted to a fucking... A drafted. You can get a scholarship to a college like this. For volleyball, softball, basketball, track team. What's to stop a parent that doesn't have any money but wants their son to have a good education to say, Hey, man, look, man. You know what I'm saying? It's tight around this motherfucker. How bad you want to go to college? How bad? Because God damn it, we can make it happen. You ain't, you ain't make it to the boys team, but I got to wait. You know what I'm saying? And, and my true issue with it, other than obviously, you know what I'm saying, the obvious shit, is the fact that now you're coming into my shit now. You know what I'm saying? Hey, yo, Nation, look. The second stop in the Big Face Podcast Alabama tour is going to be Tuskegee, Alabama. On October 6th, I will be on Highway 29 at Macon Motel. From Twitter 5, I'm be out there holding the giveaways. This is really making it understood that I'm not the internet niggas. Um, I really talk minds outside. You know what I'm saying? If you want to get your uniform before the date, you already know where to go. Hit the link. Your shirt's going for 20 Your snapback's going for $25. Um... Also, remember that if you want to donate and shit like that, it's a whole different PayPal. But that PayPal is always in the description box. You know what I'm saying? Um, all my rap niggas, I told y'all at the end of September, I'm going to open the gates back up and we're going to start promoting again. You have to have at least a $200 budget. Prices start at $200. If you do not have $200, do not contact me. If you hit me up talking that business shit and that fucking talk don't end no more fucking transaction, my nigga, you blocked, period. If you don't have two hundred dollars, this goes for business owners. If you have a product that you want me to promote on the show, you're fucking me up. Uh, 
and you don't got $200, man, don't fuck up our relationship like that because I'm going to block you. You know what I'm saying? $200 just like that. Just simple. We can do it like that. Um, If you rap niggas, get in my inbox one more time, send me a motherfucking video, I'm blocking you. If you want me to listen to your music, it's a $50 charge. If you're not cool with the $50 charge for me to listen to your music, continue doing what you've been doing. You know what I'm saying? Begging your people to watch the shit for free. And they won't even watch it. So please don't put that fucking burden on me, dog. Get your shit together, Beyond. We're gonna have, this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna have dudes fighting with Nicki Minaj and Cardi B about who's the highest female rapper. Because all you have to say is I feel like a fucking girl and, and how could how could MTV, the Oscars, or anybody fucking, you know what I'm saying? Why can't, um, what's a good fucking rap? Uh, uh, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole, any fucking good rapper, in, instead of just entering R&B singers, instead of just entering into best female, uh, best male artists, best R&B artists, best hip-hop, whatever like that, best female rap artists, instead of just entering into the male section of it, why can't they enter in, in, like, enter both places and girls do the same shit? And then if they don't accept you, it's like, why the fuck did I win? I'm a fucking female just like them. Can we, like, is that, that's impossible? That's crazy? That's crazy, ain't it? That, that, that's just fucking possible. So, being that this shit is so retarded, we're gonna do a mock session, and I'm gonna give you uh, the top three dudes that were born females. Understand that the whole um, meaning or the whole point behind this transgender shit is I feel like I was born in the wrong body. That's what they're saying. This is why they're allowing them. This is why you can go a fucking dude. I can. Well, not me because I'm, you know what I'm saying? My record, this the South. I die for that shit. But if you up north, if you made it to freedom, if you followed the North Star, then you can do it. You can actually go, you can be a full-grown fucking man and walk into a motherfucking girl's bathroom with no fucking issue and get in the wrong star. Like, I'm sorry. Piss on the whole whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, just whatever right now. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go over the top three male rap. They, they look like males, but in their mind, they were born in the wrong body. Let's get into it. Number three. YMW Melly. If you don't know of him, because you are, if you're on this channel, then you should know of him. If you do, I'm hoping that you're an artist. You know what I'm saying? Or somebody who's just appalled at shit. Um, YMW Melly is a, a, some nigga from Florida, whatever like that. Um, he's the size, he has the stature of a fucking girl, like four foot two and shit like that. Nine to eight pounds. You know what I'm saying? That's including the goals. Without the gold, nigga, about 87 pounds on some shit. Um, and I, what I noticed about these motherfuckers who were uh, born girls, that they, they were born in the wrong body, is the more guns you see in their video, the more feminine they become. You know what I'm saying? They got the tight, it's like, it's crazy. They got the Balenciagas, the red bottoms, heels. Tight ass leggings, jerkins, whatever the fuck that is. No belt on, flower shirts, whatever, dreads. Gotta have something, you know what I'm saying, that you can, you know what I'm saying, whatever you want to do with it. These niggas will put extensions in. These niggas don't mind fucking with that goddamn fake hair. They don't mind that shit. They don't mind dying they shit. Paint they fucking fingernails. They have no issue with it. It's cool. And I, I, the, this, this, this the whole thing. The niggas made it to a point like he's made it. Like, you know what I'm saying? He's actually, like, he's above a lot of niggas in Florida and shit like that. And the reason for that is because this is being promoted. It's being promoted. Just like uh, Tyreek Nasheed said some good shit. He said, uh, they have a whole, for average heterosexual black man, they have a pussy to prison pipeline for you. But for a gay black man, they have a 
school to goddamn career pipeline for you because you get these motherfuckers. He gave an example of Don, Don Lemon because a gay boy walking through the, like the hallways at school, the teachers will make them their teacher's pet, like the teacher's assistant and shit like that. There's always a fucking gay nigga in the classroom, like, doing everything the teacher say and shit like that. So then and that shit keep going on in college and shit like that. And then, boom, they get out of college with a degree and they get good jobs and shit like that. In every office Tariq and she said he went to, there's always a fucking gay dude walking around it, a gay black dude walking around that motherfucker. And that counts for that one fucking percent of black males that they have to fucking hire. There goes your affirmative actions. So... What they have is two black females at their fucking job. And this is the same shit that, like, it's, it's uniform. All the way through and through. It's no fucking different. Uniform. From there to here to fucking there. And that's what the fuck it is. So, I can understand why this thing is being pushed down your throat, pushed down your throat. No fucking homo. You know what I'm saying? Like, they keep on pushing this shit out. Like, this is what you need to see, understand. This is what you need to do to win. Don't feel bad for being different. When really, it's, you should feel bad for being wrong. But that's not what, you know what I'm saying? And, and every, the, whenever you're dealing with money, lines get skewed. You know what I'm saying? You, the whole everything gets real blurry and shit like that. And then you're already in a drug-infested environment. So it's like, what's right, what the fuck is wrong? And that's what the fuck that is. So I can't say that I'm, you know what I'm saying, really surprised about what's going on when I first seen it. Um, I remember when uh, Wayne first came out with the fucking skinny jeans. They go like, what the fuck is that? You know what I'm saying? But that was the beginning, truly, honestly. That was the beginning. And um, even that was the beginning. That, that was some shit that we didn't need. And like, we don't, we don't rock like that. You know what I'm saying? We don't rock like that. That's not what, because, you know, niggas might have had, like, you know, clothes that fit back in the day, but this shit that he brought over here was some skateboard shit. It was already some new shit. It was already some other shit that we ain't really belong to. You know what I'm saying? And if it did belong to us, then it was on the outskirts. They made this shit the forefront. And if you're not rocking like this, we're going to make it extremely difficult for you to get any type of career. Same shit. So you can see why MW in a fucking dress just like any of your fucking black stars. Number two on the list. African Bam Bottom. I assume most of y'all know who African Bam Body is. Most of y'all are 80s baby, but if we have anybody on here that's a 90s baby, um, if you're a 2000 baby, just go and get off. Get out my channel. Get out my channel. Get out my channel. Uh, Africa Van Bada was, he's part of the Zulu, was part of the Zulu Nation. I don't know if they uh, have uh, kicked him out or whatever the fuck. But um, he, he fucked little boys. But he fucked little boys in a way that a bitch fucked street niggas. You know what I'm saying? That type of shit. So he wasn't a nigga, you know what I'm saying? He was he was the bottom. He would like to suck little boy. I gotta go to the next one, y'all. I got I, I can't stay on that too long. Uh, Africa Band Bottom number two. Number one. Number one. Is Lil Uzi. Lil Uzi is number one, man. And, and it, it is a serious situation with, with, with Uzi, man, because Uzi is... When Uzi came out, Uzi was talking some trap shit, and that furthermore explains what's going on. It's a channel that you have to go through. And a, in, in order to truly win... I, I, listen to this. Uh, this for my rappers and shit like that. In order to actually win in this game, you have to come from the gangster trap rap scene. If you do not come from that sector, you can't go to pop through rap music. You cannot get to doing songs with Lady Gaga, Jennifer Lopez, and Pink and shit like that if you did not come from the... Gangster rap, if you black, if you black, 
White boys can do it all day. They straight. They good. But as a nigga, you have to come from the gangster rap scene. You have to. You have to show that you're an actual black man. If you come in on the shit that Flo Rida and Pitbull is on now, you're not going to make it. Because they're going to forever look at you like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, he one of them kind of rappers. He, he a positive rapper. All right, he, you know what I'm saying? That type of shit. And motherfuckers, just like on training day, they need to know that you got a little dirt on you. You know what I'm saying? So you see Pitbull came in with the gangster shit. Uh, Flo Rida came in on the gangster shit. And everybody will come in on that gangster shit only to then let you know exactly who the fuck they are. Truly. They can't... This, our, where we live, we live here. See, we're at the bottom of the totem pole. This is where you come in at. Iggy Azalea, Post Malone. This is where you come in at. But this is where we live. Like, look look at this shit. Look at it. Hip-hop. Oh, let's go deeper. Trap rap. Gangster rap right here. Hip-hop. You know, like, um, this this would be Kanye type of music. That, that like, that country, that, uh, Kendrick Lamar, J. Cole type shit. Then you got R&B. Then you got uh, fucking like country music, rock, and all that. And on top is pop. That, that's when you made it. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, man, you own now. And it's probably other kind of music, but I'm just trying to tell you what's going on. But at the bottom, it's our music. So that's why you get people like, uh, you got country music. Country music is extremely close to pop. And the reason why they're up here is it's extremely hard to come in. And go straight to this. These Post Malone, Iggy Azalea, they had to climb. You know what I'm saying? Climb. Once you have this backing, though, you can jump. But you can't go straight to these places unless you white. Talented white. Money white. When they fail this shit, when they fail at country and all this rock and roll shit, they come down here to try the shit again. Because we will accept everything because we're the bottom of the bottom. And this and, and within our house, where we live at, there's little subgenres. You know what I'm saying? So if you want to be on top of the hip hop charts, which means that you get to visit the pop, but you don't get to live there. You can go party with Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, uh Selena Gomez, Britney Spears, and all the motherfuckers, but you're gonna have to come back down here. You know what I'm saying? This is where you live. And they, they make sure you understand that. You live here. You don't, this is Hollywood. You don't live here. You just visit. We live here. Ed Sheridan. Adele. They will forever live there. And this was going on with Uzi. Uzi came in on that trap shit, which is why I feel like I... <clears throat> Jesus was the first rapper to say, I, I'm a real nigga. And I don't like rappers. Plies then said, I don't fuck with none of you rap niggas. You know what I'm saying? They made it unpopular and uncool to be good at rapping. Then, you do not understand how many good artists got pushed out during that time. To the point where even now, if a rapper... It's good at words, like on a Nas level. You know what I'm saying? And shit like that. Storytelling, all that good shit right there. You better find a way to put Percocets and Dracos in that motherfucking rap if you want to be relevant. And this is not, I'm not telling you, no, I'm talking about, this is what your a and is going to tell you. That's a good song, good, con good beat, nice and conscious, going to help the people. But could you tell them about your past? Well, that is my past. I, I grew up, um, uh, mom and dad took care of me, um, went to a good school. I graduated with a 4.0, went to college, and uh, I just really got a love for music. Yeah, but do you know anyone that uh, sold drugs? No, nah, I, I just I pretty much stayed away from those people. I, I realized that um, those people weren't going to go far in life, so I just stayed away from them. So, yeah, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't deal with that type of people. Well, have you ever thought about if you would have did that? Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, I mean, 
I thought about it because you know back then like they had the holes and all that shit like that. Well, look, take that feeling and and act as if you were. Tell me what that dream is. Tell me, tell me about that dream. And they'll take that song. When you talk about, uh, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I was a dope dealer, but they take that if I was part off. Because we need you to be someone. <clears throat> that perpetuates what it is. That perpetuates the stage that we are now captured inside of. All this high vibration and, and coming out of poverty, being sober, saving money, starting the LLC, getting a driver license, getting through probation successfully, the three S's, anything like that, fuck that shit because the higher ups are not going to push that out. But they will push out anything with pills and guns. So, get to work. And this is what you have. And we should be that filtering system. We understand. If you understand that the system is against you, black man. Why then don't you boycott the arm, the right hand of that system, which is the now present day rap industry. The right hand of this system that oppresses us is the present day rap industry. But instead of boycotting it, we do the exact opposite um, and we endorse these motherfuckers because they have what it is that we want, which is a ticket out of poverty. We want to get away from the black community so fucking bad that we don't give a fuck if all we get to do is visit the pop world. Just get me out this motherfucker. Whatever I got to do. Whatever the fuck I got to do, man. <clears throat> Lil Uzi was born a fucking girl Obviously you can tell I don't have to tell you How the fuck he was born a girl The shoulder roll Ain't got no rust on it That's practiced Sure he can do the whip Or the nay nay Whatever the fuck <clears throat> He can do that shit The eye roll The, the pain the fingernails I don't give a motherfuck About no expression my nigga this nigga came in through the trap door, no pun intended. He came in through the trap door and niggas accepted that shit. Jesus came in and you, we check these niggas motherfucking trap sheet. We check their resume with a fine tooth comb. But we let these fucking faggots come in with automatic weapons in their videos as if that makes them a gangster. They say Percocets and Draco and niggas is accepted because you see it a lot because Worldstar put it up. My nigga, I think that we not the motherfuckers who say, I just like the beat. That's what the white folks say. I just like the beat, bro. That's why they can ride around listening to fucking Master P and fucking, you know what I'm saying? Lil John, just love the beat, bro. But for us, it seems like we pick and choose who it is we give that stamp to. Dolph had to earn his. Gotti had to earn his. But Trippy Red, Takashi 6 9 as long as you paint your fucking fingernail, except for Thug. Oh, niggas ran down, dog. Niggas made sure that he was really about that. But all these other pop niggas, dog stayed here. He stayed here. All these other niggas who just coming through for the moment, let them pass. And the reason why you let them pass is because we're too easily fooled. 
we won't support a nigga until the nigga no longer needs our support. Don't get me started. Top three niggas who were born a woman. I'm going to stop before I go too far. See y'all in a minute. Keep the PayPal.